So I was aware that George Howard would be the faculty speaker, but I was not aware that I would be following him. That would have been a nice heads up. Though I lack the art to decipher it, no doubt the next chapter in my book of transformations is already written. I am not done with my changes. The first time I read through the layers, a poem written by Stanley Kunitz, I had to read that last line over again. I am not done with my changes. It's become a mantra that I love to go back to, so much so that I had the words to my parents' chagrin permanently etched on my side. Today, those words are ringing in my ears. There is so much change that lies ahead. President Roger Brown, Board of Trustees, distinguished honorees, faculty, staff, family, friends, it is my honor and privilege to represent the class of 2016 as your student speaker. I look out onto a sea of faces beaming with pride and possibility. Today is a day filled with overwhelming excitement and crippling fear. What's next? Will I be enough? Am I ready? What if I was texting during the most important part of class and I missed it? I'm kidding, kind of. As I stand here wrestling with this plethora of emotions, I'm trying to remind myself to lean into the change. I implore you to join me. Maybe you have a five-year plan. Maybe you have a five-minute plan. Maybe you have no idea what you're doing tomorrow. Maybe you have all of your belongings packed in a car outside the stadium and you're moving to Nashville as soon as you get the diploma. Maybe you're getting married and starting a family. Maybe you're going to med school. Maybe you're going to study marine biology because an octopus is an amazing creature. Seriously, they can open jars. You should Google that. Whatever comes next, wherever life takes you, you are prepared and you're gonna be great. Berkeley has taught me to be an amazing musician. It's taught me to love and appreciate music in ways that I didn't even realize were possible, but it's taught me so much more. Often we're so focused on our craft that we don't appreciate just how much we learn from our music. In ensemble rooms in the 150 basement, I learned how to share, how to communicate non-verbally, and how to work as a team. Through a deeper analysis of the works of those who came before me, I learned about human rights and social justice, how to articulate clearly the topics that inspire me and what I can do to affect the change I want to see in the world. In watching other artists perform, I gained the courage to share my truth, be it in my songwriting, my performance, or when I'm standing in front of a stadium of my peers, admitting how scared I am for the future. These are just some of the non-musical tools that Berkeley has given me, but the list goes on, and you have them too. Have you ever tried to organize the schedules of eight musicians, plus find a location to have a rehearsal and make sure you have charts? If that's not small group management, I don't know what is. Real. I have no idea what lies ahead, but I know there will be change. And as frightening as it is, I look forward to it. I encourage you to see today not as the end or the beginning, but just as another of the thousands of changes you will make over the course of your wonderful, colorful, prodigious lives. I challenge you to lean into them, love them, and love yourself as you move from one layer to another. As you go out to do and create the myriad of amazingness that I know you all will, I urge you to take this spirit of change with you. Internally, yes, but also into the world around you. As I sit here, I look out into the future of the music industry and I see the possible, oh, I'm standing. As I stand here, I'm standing. As I stand here, I look out, you got it. Internally, yes, but also out into the world around you. There are so much possibilities that lay in our hands. What changes do you want to see within our industry? What changes do you want to see within the world? 
Essay quam videri, our school motto reminds us, don't seem, be. On January 10th, the world lost a beacon in embracing change. David Bowie reinvented himself many times over the years. He continued to do so until his final album, released just a week before his death, which opens the door into the mind of a man facing his own inevitable mortality. Just last week, we lost another inspiration. Prince, too, understood the importance of fluidity and the danger of staying stagnant. We watched as these artists transformed themselves again and again, becoming ever more transfixed with these men who seemed to be so comfortable with the kaleidoscope of personalities that lay inside them. Who will you be tomorrow? How will this day, this speech, this handshake mold and shape you into someone else? How has Berkeley changed you? How have your experiences changed you? I know that I am so very different than the person I was when I stepped into the Uchida building for my audition. And if you had told me at my high school graduation in 2004 that I would be speaking at my college graduation 12 years later, I probably would have cried. But today, I am full of nothing but joy. My story hasn't been typical. But those twists and turns have created the person you see before you today. How has your story created you? There's a reason that a song that stays on the one for 32 bars isn't very compelling. It's the changes that make the songs interesting. <laughs> yeah. Wait, there's another one, there's another one, hold on. I'm looking forward to seeing what lies in store for me. Maybe there's some cool Phrygian modal interchange coming. You're welcome. I'll just have to wait and see. I'll leave you with Kunitz's words again, just in case you didn't get them the first time. Though I lack the art to decipher it, no doubt, the next chapter in my book of transformations is already written. I am not done with my changes. Class of 2016, friends, congratulations. I can't wait to see who you're gonna be. Thank you.